Coach, they do a good job of tackling in the backfield in the sacks. Uh, how's, how's your preparation on this week to combat that? Yeah, no, really aggressive defense. Um, statistically, TFL sacks, force fumbles, like they're one of the best in the country. And so it's a huge challenge, and it, you know it's fundamentals. Uh, it's it's pride in your blocking assignment, and it's understanding of the looks you get, you know, and what can come out of them. And uh, and then schematically, we got to do good things to protect them. You know, we got to be smart. You don't want to stand back there and drop back protection all day against what these guys do. Uh, they've done a great job. They've got good personnel. Their defensive ends are fun to watch. Their their corners are playing at a high level. Uh, safety number two is really a good contact speed player and. A lot of respect, you know, for what they do, and excited, you know, for the opportunity to play with uh, our guys against them. It's going to be a fun game. I'm sure. How challenging will it be for CJ, a young quarterback, uh, identifying the, the pressure and, and, and making the right calls? Yeah, I mean, it's no different than the other games. I mean, he's seen a lot already, you know, in his time, and I don't know if it gets harder than going to Death Valley in your first start, seeing all this stuff comes and does. So I think he's well prepared for what could come, and it just comes down to execution. I'm sure you were aware of how. Justin Jolie could be used, but as you go through the season and see how much of a mismatch he has, different than Jay Sam, obviously, but same kind of a mismatch. What is it like yeah. having that in the uh, in the toolbox? He's kind of a blend, you know, of Jalen Samuels and Kerry Angeline. You know, I mean, uh, the big receiving target tight end that you can have, but also a guy that can really run well once he touches it. Um, so, yeah, we're super excited about not only what he's done, but the improvements, you know, and, and he's still got a lot of upside. Like, there's a lot that he can continue to work on, and he knows that. And he was really a hard worker. Like, that's one thing you like about Justin. He shows up every day and works really hard, you know, and so he's dedicated to improving. Um, and, you know, as a coach, that's all you can ask for is to get a talented player with a good attitude that wants to get better. In general, what is the advantages of having a flex tight end versus a third or fourth receiver out there? Uh, the blocking schemes, you know, he's 250 pounds, so you know you can get him in the box and do different things with them, and a lot harder to do that with a 180 to 200 pound guy and expect him to hold up blocking defensive ends and outside linebackers. So the number of formations you can be in where you have a tight end that can move around, you see it all over the NFL, versus four wides where it's four wides, you know, it's just more versatility. Devin Van came back for another year. He could have gone to the NFL and probably gotten drafted last year, but he. What was the conversation like with him when he told you he was coming back and just how huge has his presence been for this team both on and off? Yeah, you know, I think those conversations are uh, always start with one thing. Uh, do you think you can get better? You know, and, and our conversation, he said, yeah, there's things I need to get better at. And so that's where it started, you know, and then let's go through the process. Let's get the information we can get from all the GMs that we know and call people on the phone and let him have those conversations, not just me telling them what I'm hearing. And then sit back down, you know, and, and he knew that if he had the year that he could have, that he could elevate, you know, and you take, say there's 20 defensive ends on the board on the draft room, and he's at the bottom, and those guys go pro, and well, now he's at the top, and now there's a new 20, you know, and, and if you play well, then all of a sudden you've made yourself a lot of income in one college year, you know, in some cases guys go from seventh round to third or fifth round to second, and you're talking about generational money. And so it is betting on yourself in a way. Um, and if you know you can improve, you know, it's a good bet. And, and you know, in Davin's case, to answer your question, uh, I was over the moon when I knew he was coming back. Man, I, I knew I could help him. I knew he could benefit from it, not just as a player, but as a person, uh, and become a vocal leader, which he has. And so his growth is, is uh, exponential that way, too, you know, as far as being the alpha of the team. And when he talks, people listen. You know, and a year ago he was more just put his head down and go to work, and now he's leading. Well, have you talked? How much have you talked to some of your seniors and grad students about this being the last home game? Uh, a lot. You know, I mean, we started the conversation in front of the team on Sunday and put pictures of guys that will play their last game at home. And I've told them stories about what that means for me, you know, as a as a coach and what it meant to me as a player. And and then you're just you know, challenging guys. Like, hey, we want these guys to leave uh, their last walk up the tunnel after the game to be as memorable as going out, you know, to see their families. And we have to earn that, a really good opponent. And I'll do something with the team at the hotel Friday night, and it's, it's always a special deal where I'll get each one of those guys up in front of the room and, and go through their, their life, basically, at NC State and, and give them the honor and you know, credit that they deserve. What's that like emotionally, even as a coach? You've spent so much time yeah. with these players when they come out 
of the tunnel, you know, their families, and you get to have that embrace. Like, what's that like emotionally? Because they're just, it's they're more a lot, players. And it's pretty heavy, you know? Uh, and that's one of the things when you stay to school 12 years. Like, I've been able to do that 12 times, obviously. But with the guys I've recruited, I've been able to do that. When you go in a young man's home, or you meet him at the school, or whenever your recruiting started with them, uh, from 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, and then all of a sudden now they're 23 year old, you know, and they're graduated, some of them engaged, you know, and they're playing their last game. Like, there's a lot. A lot of memories, uh, uh, a lot of love, and so it means a lot, you know, to me to be a part of the journey, and that's the thing I love about coaching football. You know, I actually get to have an integral role and, and help raising somebody else's sons and helping him, you know, hopefully reach the dreams that he has for himself while he's here. For someone like Timothy McKay, who yeah. you, I'm sure you met at a very young age, yeah. and eighth he was grade. obviously young when he enrolled here, but eighth to grade. see two degrees later, or maybe three for all I know, um, <laughs> everything that he's achieved and, and experienced at NC State after whatever age he was when you first met him. Yeah, eighth grade. I mean, he was in the, the room, you know, when his brother was being recruited here, and, and uh, we kind of joked about it, like, I'll be back for you someday, you know, and, you know, and that's how it ended up. And uh, he's done a lot here. He's played a ton of snaps. Played tackle, played a guard, been a, a really solid leader for our football team. Works you know, the way you want guys to work, and academically, I mean, he's one of the standards of how you become a student athlete. Doing all those things in the classroom that he's done. How would you describe this class as you know playing your last game, just as a, as a collective class coming through NC State? You know, I don't know if I can put it in words. Each one of these groups is different, and at the same time, uh, they resemble each other. You know, they're guys that have invested and, and have long stories that have ups and downs in them, you know, and they've overcome them, overcome them and become better versions of themselves through adversity. There's a lot of pride in it for me in seeing that growth um, and seeing, because I knew where he was, you know, and a lot of things that these guys go through aren't public things, you know, and so you, you see a senior that's smiling and crying on senior day. I see a guy that I knew since he was 14, you know, and, and how far he's come. And I remember the the things he's been through and, and the great things that he's done. And so, you know, it's not like a eulogy. They're not passing away, but you certainly look at it almost like, you know, you're sitting there looking at their life going backwards a little bit as a coach. And you know, this class no different than the others. They poured a lot of work into our program and, and, you know, we're very thankful for that. How is it different, you know, when you're you're celebrating guys who've been here four, five, six years as opposed to some of the guys that, you know, we're only here for one yeah. season? It's different, yeah. I mean, I'm only however many years this thing's been going on into that. and um, But there's still solid things, you know, like Jordan Waters and I went fishing together this summer and, and uh, spent a lot of time talking, you know. You know, I've gotten to know him very well and, and have great respect for him. You know, Grayson and I are out there cracking jokes at each other today. Like, you build friendships with these guys that will sustain their college life. And, and some of them are deeper than others, as you know. You know being with somebody for three days versus four years, it's what happens in the three days. You know, I mean, you can have someone you're an acquaintance with for four years and someone you're a great friend with in three days, you know, and so it's really about the things that happen and the time you're with them. And, and I do try to do that. I try to have as many, you know, memories as I can with these guys.